in the world of film photography, there's only a few brands that are truly synonymous with the word quality. One brand would be Foytlander, or at least Foytlander in the 1950s. Their cameras, their lenses are on par with Leica in many regards. Optical quality is fantastic. The camera build is fantastic, quite innovative and very well finished polished cameras. One such camera that really fits this description is the Foytlander Bessa. This is a little different than the normal rangefinder Bessas, the 35mm Bessas. Instead, these are the 120 6x9, 6x6 folding Bessas. The earliest Bessa folders came out in around 1929. They were in 6x9 as well as 6x6. They had only a few basic features, although some more advanced models did come with a rangefinder mechanism. By the end of World War II, Foytlander decided to upgrade these Bessa models with the Bessa 1 and the Bessa 2. The Bessa 1 would have been a basic viewfinder folding camera, while the Bessa 2 was a rangefinder. The camera that I have, of course, is the Bessa 1, which is the viewfinder model. This one is a 6x9 camera, although with a mask, you can actually shoot 6x4.5, which is pretty awesome. This will double your shots from 8 to 16, of course. It's a fairly basic camera. It does come with some nice features, such as double exposure prevention, as well as an adjustable viewfinder that can switch between 6x9 to 6x4.5. These cameras were produced from the late 40s all the way to the late 50s. They came mainly with a 105mm f4.5 Vascar lens. This is one of the consumer lenses that Voigtlander produced. And then after that, more advanced, you would have the 105mm f3.5 color scope bar lens. And that's the lens that I fortunately have on my camera. So because it is a basic rangefinder usage and loading of the camera is quite simple. You will load it like any other 120 camera, and then you will, instead of having automatic frame counter, you advance using the red window until you get to frame number one on the right red window. If you're shooting 6x4.5, then you'll be using both windows, in which case you'll advance first until your number is in the right window. And then for the next frame, you actually go to the left window. Nonetheless, this camera is quite compact and it is very easy to hike around with. So I figured what a better way to show the camera off than to go snowshoeing with it. So it's a beautiful day here in Lassen National Park. Fresh snow on the ground. I'm literally the only one here except for the park rangers. So imagine having a whole national park to yourself. Pretty damn awesome. In any case, got the Bessel one here and a roll of Cinestill old double X there. So we're gonna start with some black and whites here. Enjoy some of the beautiful scenery, pretty much just smothered in snow. I just love these icicles here on the corner of this roof. Another thing about, as I mentioned before, how compact this is, it already fits in my little fanny pack right here. Boom, boom. Easy to carry with, without camera straps since this does not have strap lugs. Another thing about this is, of course, it's in meters. And I got a lot to learn when it comes to meters. pretty nippy today it's like maybe 30 degrees outside or minus one if you're European and everyone else but I'm from California so this is nippy as hell I'm, I'm feeling like an ice cube and I'm sure you guys don't care you're probably if you're like me sitting on your porcelain throne watching YouTube nice and comfortable but you know unless your toilet seat's cold but otherwise yeah it's a good day to freeze my ass off can't pass up a stinking old phone booth here or old pay phone I mean thought I ought to do it my fingers are a little frozen here so I can't even tell how this will shoot 
It's a good sign though, heard a click. <laughs> and then another useful tip is always, always, always wind on immediately. I have wasted too many shots double exposing images on accident. It was about this time that I wanted to try a more intimate landscape. The way the snow stuck to this tree here and then you have the texture snow below it, I thought it would create an interesting composition. Another intimate landscape of sorts would be this moss here, I think with the the snow on it, the light, the way it's hitting could make for an interesting composition. Got this beautiful old juniper here. Same thing as before, you have the snow, the moss, I think you have some decent directional light. So I'm going to give one last shot to shot number eight, another close-up shot. So let's hope I nail the focus, otherwise I'm in deep shit. As you can see, I definitely whiffed on the focus here. That's kind of the drawback of viewfinder cameras is you don't get that precision that you always need. So there you have it. As you can see, this lens is quite compact, quite lightweight. It's very easy to snowshoe around with. And then look at the results and the contrast of the results, especially. If you're shooting black and white film, for me, contrast is quite important. And the color scope our lens really delivers in that regard. As for the sharpness of the lens, I would say you couldn't ask for much better, especially if you're shooting stock down. The issue with folders, of course, is that the film is not going to be completely flat on the film plane, so it isn't always the best way of gauging the true sharpness and quality of the lens. Nonetheless, I don't think the edges were all that soft, and I think just as a landscape lens and landscape setup, I was more than satisfied.